Y'all got any questions? Do you want to, do you want to chat? Chat back? <laughs> So what year you did all of this? Oh, it's ongoing. Oh, yeah, we, we, we're in it. We're living so it's it. like a journey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I popped up. Um, I popped up one of my participatory pieces. Um, I like using mirrors a lot because I like I like to get people to look at themselves, and then you know through a through a, a you know particular experience of that reflection. Um, Really, the goal is to get people to see others in themselves and themselves and others through that reflection. So, you know, we do use things like two-way mirror glass and stuff. But uh, maybe be doing something during the fashion show thing that's that's happening here. Hopefully, it's there. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, bored yeah. with that. So, the 26th. I'll remind you all because I'm promoting that anyway. Because it'd be a good time to remember that. Yes. Uh, a lot of about that. This piece, the piece that I'm, I'm hoping to do there, I call it selfie expression, and um, I used the, I use, I used to use the Snapchat specs, but I use the Ray Bans now, um, and it's like a Chabal mirror. People are invited to put on the glasses, and look into the mirror, and talk about what makes them beautiful, and um, it's a really cool process that you know everybody starts. Always people start talking. You know, I like my hair, I like my, I like my eyes, but then. They immediately go right inside and start talking about interview. It's like I like my personality, and then sometimes people pull their friends in. And like my friends make me beautiful, so it's it's a really special piece, I think. Yeah, okay. I saw it in the um, gal well, not the mirror itself, but the recording. In the yeah, album. cool. Also, I think you wanted to ask him about the camera thing. Yeah. Thing. What is that screen that you use? What, what's the name of that? What is that? Where did you get that? That screen that you play it on, that you plug in and play it on. Oh, 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 that like What's digital that canvas thing. Yeah, yeah, what is that? Um, I get the name of it for you. Yeah. Is that what it's called though, a digital canvas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what, yeah. that's how I found it. I, I was going to build it with a TV, but I, it was just too, it was just too hard. The thing about those, I mean, I don't know, it, it, it's always a challenge. There's always limitations, like, um, those things are pretty expensive, but... Uh, you know, and then, I don't know. Limitations seconds? are good for art. How many seconds will it push? That was on like a, that was on like a two hour loop, I think, and it, it could have, it could have gone. Because of your file, probably. Yeah. 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 What would you say your medium is? Mm. Us. Us. Experience, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that the moment that I realized, you know, oh snap, I'm a painter living inside a painting. I can't not be an artist, that's impossible. I connected with that, that, that that inner artist is the foundation of being a human being. We're all that inner artist. And I think, you know, I started to Understand when I started to understand that about myself, I started to understand others better, and I, you know, and this was like, I was still, I was still committed to to try not to be an artist. Though I said, okay, I can't not be an artist. How do I still not make art? And so I was like, but I want to do this. I want to share it. So I thought maybe I can get other people to to make the art, you know make art through other people. So if I just set up, if I set up these situations, like just pop up a mirror, right? And create a situation that through somebody else's experience, we can capture some kind of content to share and reflect on, then, you know, still do art without making art. It's just, anyway, you know, that was the, that was. So Nick, you call yourself an artist. Yeah. And everybody is an artist. But yeah. some people don't produce any content. Mm. So what you just everybody's just an artist, there's no differentiation. Mm -hmm. They don't produce any content. So if you don't produce content, but I, I think it's sort of splitting hairs. I think everybody's creative and everything they do expresses degrees of so very good creativity. Right. But then an artist is something in our society is a label that we judge, like, 
I don't think the question, I don't think we use the question of what is art. Well, I know people do, <coughs> but it's like, what, I think one of our bigger things is because we accept every, people who do anything and will now accept that it's art if they label it so, but I think now the, the, the judgment is, is it good or bad? Do we like it or do we not like it? So, mm. really, I think everybody's a creator, mm. creative, but I don't think everybody's an artist because some people, don't want to create content. But you so don't need to, because <coughs> because art art isn't. That's art my point. Isn't That's what thing. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That, that so that your point is you don't need to create content to be an artist, and I'm saying mm -hmm. maybe you do need to create content to be an artist, but you're always going to be a creator. You're always going to be. Can't you're going to arrange. You're going to arrange those flowers, and you're creating beauty, but you didn't. Unless you go put it in a show, I mean, I'm not saying you have to put it in a show. You can leave it on your table and say, that's beautiful. I, I consider that art. I can see in your head. I think our society provides. I, I don't think the art world, I don't think you're going to be able to have classes and say, there is no art. I mean, everybody's an artist. I think it's a label that our society requires, that you have to be an artist and that means something particular. But I fully support and embrace the idea we're all creative and everything we do is creative. And I like that concept that you were going in, and I think it's a wonderful idea to explore. When I stopped making art, as we were just discussing in the de definitions, all of a sudden I see art everywhere. If we can't, if our human condition is such that if we're not making it, we force ourselves to see it. We must express our creativity. Mm. That was what? Cool. So, art, artist is a label. Right? And well, in reality, it used to be a label in the Roman times. Did no, that's the thing. Artist? You go back in time. Made stuff or craft or whatever. We, I don't know. There is no such thing as art. It doesn't exist. And a lot of people hold through with you. There's, it's, there's, <laughs> there's only life. We have this weird conception that art is something else because we have this cool little uh, uh, appliance that we call a frame. And, you know, you, over time, we have developed this frame more and more and used it to separate. It, 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 it tells you exactly where the art ends and reality begins. But if you go and you look at, like, primitive art, Primitive art isn't in a frame. It is on life. It's part of life. It's real. It's not separate from it. It's closer to magic than anything else. Like, it is literally a part of our lives. So, so what do you think of, like, the perception of, not exactly, so, like, if you look at art history, there was a concept of, like, creating a window into reality. So they would, like, you know, they would refine their brush strokes so you couldn't see them. And it was like almost like smooth as like glass. But then you started getting into the era where they started, like like you were saying, like retaliating against that. You start getting into like Fauvism and expressions and cubism, and then they start making pieces that break those rules. And they start thinking of it more of like creating their own world. So do you think? I know everybody's an artist, but do you think that there's sometimes people that are more akin to kind of connecting? and like not only connecting to the world around them, but being able to take that and foster something new and make something completely their own. So I, I think this is really cool because yeah, artists will, artists, you know, anytime we create an expression, you know, anytime an artist creates an expression or we create a new expression, we can take that expression into our ordinary perceptions. And that's the thing is we are always, when we're perceiving, we have expressions in our orienting our perception all the time. So you go and you look at a you go and you look at a Monet, right? And you see that the way that they have painted shadows with this like with this line, right? And suddenly you go outside and you look and you see a shadow of a tree and you see that line around the shadow of the tree. The shadow was never presented itself. In your in the in your perception of the world 
before you adapted this new, this new expression of it into your life. The, the painting guided your perception in a new way, and when you left the gallery, your world was painted differently. So, I don't know if that... That kind of, yeah, that, I feel like that kind of connects, because like, uh, yeah, if you look at like this one piece, and it was one of those, like the Isle of the Dead, right? And it was like, we were, and you get so kind of infatuated with it, and it looks like just such a different, like, perception of reality that like it's almost like you can get so caught up into it like, you get like a snap you get like thrown back and it's crazy but I feel like I feel like in that way that kind of connects with what you're saying it's like not necessarily creating your own world but you're taking things around you like perspectives like you said like the outline of the tree and then you're expressing it in your own way this the painting that we live in yeah it's a collaborative painting. Yeah. You know, when we're born, you're just adding your own piece to it. We adapt. We adapt the. I call it the ruling aesthetic. You know, we're your, the people that we surround ourselves with, our family, our culture, our friends. We we take on the expressions of each other, and that's sort of that's the foundation for the painting that we live in. But we all get to. We all get to take part in, in, in repainting that picture. We can repaint literally our entire reality. It's not, it's hard because we are living in it together. And so, you know, like, dang, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful and a terrible painting. And it's, that means it's our responsibility to paint this world as beautiful as we can for ourselves and for each other. And to see the beauty. Yeah. If you see, if you want to see the beauty, you will. Oh, you said something about good and bad art, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but I, subjective with just a social thing. Yeah, I think that there's there's a difference between good and bad, and good and bad with like a capital G, like good. When when you're looking at a when you're looking at a piece, you can you can maybe judge it technically is a good or a bad piece. I don't know, I think that that's hard for me to do, but when it comes to thinking about art as experience, there is, I think, a very, very important way to understand what is good art and what is bad art. Good art adds beauty and love to our experience of life, and bad art takes away from that. Bad art harms the experience. Like, you can be a good artist, you know, I'm selling, you know, you're a clerk in a grocery store, and you are just like, you're, you're smiling at your customers and you're asking them how they're doing. You are just expressing a little bit of beauty in that day that's going to make that person's experience a little bit better. That to me is the best kind of artist anybody can be, just being a good, being a good person. Because you're an artist and you're coloring that world of experience. And if you're, if you're hurting people or you're doing anything or just being, you know, you're, you're damaging the experience of anybody else or even yourself, you're, that, that to me is bad art, so adjust that. Well, because we're in our appreciation, um, and we've started to talk about art as beauty, um, and, and you know, I kind of feel obligated to like to but right? Like, what do we make of works that consciously and deliberately convey negative and even horrific content? You know, what do we make of Goya's? Uh, 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 you know, uh, what's his face? Jupiter eating. Or Saturn eating his son. But then you have to think the purpose of it, and you have to. I'm not saying you have to do anything. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I'm just saying the point. <clears throat> Did the artist want to show extreme, agitating content to help you face it and perhaps improve yourself? Is the goal to make the viewer? somehow better by making him face something. And the, and the artist is like, I, I'm gonna show you 
this guy pouring urine on Christ. Now, some people might think, yeah, let's free ourselves from the shackles of religion. And some might say, well, no, you know, that's, that's offensive. And, and either way, the viewer is going to look at that and, and somehow improve. It's, it's, it's about, you can look at graphic porn and you can say, now I'm depressed, or you can internalize and say, I'm going to somehow improve myself. Well, I just want to what you kind of even if reel it's that bad, in a little bit because, you, look at war. you know, what if, you know, lawyers, I'm bringing that because we've all seen it, those of us from our history and our, our appreciation, yeah. remember, like, he's uh, eating his oh, kid yeah. drinks. <clears throat> but what if that piece, that artwork, inspired me to go with my son? <laughs> it's still art, right? It, it, it didn't, it you conveyed only negative and maybe horrific things to really bring it into like binary, you know? But. You can't be responsible for people's truth. But if your intention is somehow this is going to be helpful and expanding and growth causing. I think I, I, think I know a, what you mean. It's kind of like, like like the German propaganda stuff, like during the, like World War II, like right. that was harmful, it was spreading rhetoric that wasn't true. And, and then I wanna tie it into what we were reading in our appreciation too, where like when we talk about art as beauty, but that being like Immanuel Kant's point of view, and we find that, that that can be a bit limiting in terms of like the definition of art, because then you start to like put fence around it. Right, and as you pointed out, like, every time I try to put a fence around art, it's like, whoop, step it out, right? And when, uh, I'm gonna out art you, or art outside of itself. One game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that could be one of the things as well. I really liked your uh, bringing up your fish too, right? Because like, like fish, you know, active fishing, you're like, like, go ahead and try to grab art. Right, it's gonna, yeah, Darius. Well, I'm thinking that doesn't that just kind of take away from like the like the Goyas or like the Caravaggios who are really skillful artists? Like I feel like you can like shoot a basketball around and can't cut yourself with a basketball player. Like there's people professionally doing this and they are basketball players. Like doesn't that take away from what they spent their entire life trying to do? I think it's important that we celebrate, you know, both that we're able to celebrate both this like these, you know, masterpieces of expression while also, the thing is, we, we do celebrate those, those masterpieces because of the value that they give all of our lives. And, but to, but to say that, oh, that's good, but what my kid is drawing with crayons isn't good. I think is just. Well, I wouldn't say that one's good or this one's not. I think it just one's they call it one art and the other one are taking away from the person who spent ten thousand hours trying to perfect this piece. Like mm -hmm. I feel like they deserve more than the kid who is splashing around. Regardless, regardless how you look at it, somebody spent ten thousand hours on this piece. I feel like they deserve the credit. That's the full ten. I think what you want to put your finger on though is like the crap things too right like because the craft does matter even when like the craft of something is deliberately and consciously or maybe even like ignorantly like not well crafted right like that can add to things that can be part of what is attractive about it but also like with craft that becomes part of the art in a way too because now we're looking at it and we're seeing Caravaggio and like his amazing treatment of like, of communicating lights through this two dimensional image, right? Like, um, and it's like, in those cases, the art and craft are like married. You can't really separate them. Um, but I can also have craft, right? There's crafts out there that we acknowledge as crafts that I don't think people would call art, right? Um, so then art is something else, you know? And that means that we can find it elsewhere without, without craft. But Nick said everybody's an artist, so they can make their craft and they're an artist. 
So I think we're talking I, about, two, I think we're trying to align two different concepts that creativity as the human condition and art as product and the various reasons you do it and the various degrees of technical ability and all sorts of things like that. I agree that we are, we are creatives and therefore it is the truth that we affect each other's experience. We can make it good or bad. Well, I'm wondering is the definition of art that we get out of the, the art theory book that I gave art appreciation students, right? Ooh, yeah. And, and that comes down from uh, an anthropologist and he phrases it as uh, meaning skillfully encoded in an affecting sensuous medium. I think that covers a lot of the basis of what you were saying in some ways, right? But like, um, you know, skillfully encoded, and that's crap. Right, but also craft doesn't have to be like how I think of what craft is. I mean, with you, it can be like it in like a small group's idea of craft, or it, like an a individual, right? And I bring up things like like the early years of of hip hop, right? Where there was a very specific type of crafting <coughs> that had to happen within there. A lot of people disagree, but enough people were like, "No, this is a a, a skilled craft." Right, it becomes a thing. Or I always remember this experience too of like um, it being in grad school and, and uh, the chair of the department was giving a tour of like undergrad, like high school schools. Um, going to come in, and I had this huge, you know, four foot wide, eight foot long slab of clay, and I was pressing my elbows into it as making something um, with my elbow pattern, right, my skin. Um, and he kind of just, the chair just kind of stopped. He was like, you know, Justin, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing this. And, it, oh, well, why are you doing it? Well, I'm making a mold to do this. And he asked me, you know, is it important that it's your elbow? But sometimes it matters that it's like, oh, this is the artist's body. I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, like, I like the texture of it, you know? And then he asked, well, can, can I do it then? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, why? Well, and I explained it like, well, and I hadn't really thought about this, but in my head, right? Like, well, one impression has a relationship to the next, to the next, and I'm kind of in tune with that, you know, and like, you don't, you're not in on it yet. Um, you know, so, no, you can't. And he just kind of turned to these, you know, these young students was like, there's, there's craftsmanship right there, right? Like, that's, that's the craft for his particular piece at this particular moment. And I'm like, ah, and he was right, too. Like, I wasn't thinking about, you know, like uh, Michelangelo and him like carving, like polishing, right? Like, like that kind of stuff. But it was still there. Um, and I think that, like that idea of craft kind of relates to some of the things that you do too, just in a different way. Um, because also Darius, can I just go play basketball, man? You can, but going like, if you were to go out and be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a basketball player. Just, he's not, okay, he's but not sport, he's not a professional basketball player. I think that's the difference you're thinking of. He could be, he could be playing basketball. He'd be, in that sense, a basketball player, but he's not a professional basketball player. Yeah, sure. But he's also <laughs> artists, and so you, you saw an artist who was good at that. You just call it professional artist. I can say, yeah. I, I have so, absolutely no technical ability at all, <laughs> at all. Like I don't, I. That's not. I mean. I was an actor, right? So I had I had skills there. But when it comes to drawing, say, I went to a figure drawing class the other day. Uh, I'd never been to a figure drawing class, and I was actually like, I was like, yo, I feel like I don't like I I was invited to go, but I was like, I don't know that it's even like appropriate for me to go because I don't feel like I have the technical skills needed to respect the model and and even the other artists in the room who like, you know, oh, have skill. And Justin and a few other people were like, no, 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 you, you come because it's, this, is about, this is about your experience and whatever, you're, you're gonna gain something by coming to this, you're an artist and you know, this process is going to, is gonna fill you up somehow. So don't be like, I just think it's, it's, 
when we start saying, when we start telling people that, you know, you're not, you're not a ball player because you have no skills, right? That's, it just is like. Well, I think it's just the way you're saying it. I'm not saying that you're not, you're not a ball player because you have no skill. I'm saying that these are real ball players because they have skill. I not think, the other way around. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe yeah. what you, like, maybe more of what we're getting is like, you may not just want, just want me on your team. <laughs> right? And, like, like, and, 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 and I think that's fine. Right? Like, that's fine. Like, just like if, you know, in like our world, if we were doing like, if, you know, if I was trying to put together a contemporary art show, I don't want your oil painted landscape. Like, it's not welcome. Like, no offense. Like, you go ahead and do that. You just can't do it here. It's okay to have standards. You know? Yeah. It's okay to have standards. And it's, it's, and it's great to celebrate those, you know, it's great to celebrate those skills. And it's, it's wonderful to watch because they are just, they are, they're achievements like in, you know, they're human achievements that we all can celebrate as human beings. It's awesome looking at the masterpieces, but I think it's really cool to still celebrate that ordinary, you know, just shooting hoops with. I feel like what you're trying to say also is that like everybody has the ability and is in tune with like the world around them and can hone those skills, but it's just like, those people, like the professional basketball players and like people like Caravaggio are just like, they have done like a different level. Like there's, there's just so the much touch with it. Yeah, they're the elites. Yeah. But then like, I feel like also what you're trying to say is, but don't let that discourage you. Yeah. Like, like you can still like, you don't have to be on that elitist level. Like you yeah. can still add, you know, be useful and I mean, add like craft. Yeah, even if you're not like a Caravaggio. So this is great though too because you know it just happened that like most of you are either most of our art appreciation we're working our way towards it or in art history like right, we're going to reach a point in contemporary art where it looks at like this idea of the, the elitism of arts and it's like well no right because what elitism is can be in a way is just being exclusionary um so artists will think consciously and deliberately start welcoming like they call it de-skilling um and maybe it doesn't resonate with us the same way, but I still think it has like the same sort of value as anything else that does resonate with us. That like, you know, they're looking at art and be like, no, this needs to be like taking off the man, you know, off the pedestal and it needs to be dispersed and democratized because just because you're not a great artist in whatever way you think of that doesn't mean that you're not valid. He's creative. Everybody's a creator. What if I'm a destroyer? <laughs> then you're, you're, you're creating you anti-peace. You're creating anti-peace. That's what I hear you. Intention uh, is important, I think. Right, because that is a valid, and, and I think there's some great artworks that are, are destructive. A deconstruction. When, you, when we go, this, you remember this lecture was about not, about not art appreciation. When we go to museums, <laughs> yes. when we watch a ball game on TV, we are seeing the masterpieces. But what I also want us to be able to appreciate is that piece of trash is also, can be beautiful in your own experience. It doesn't matter, art is for all of us. So, you know, we all yeah, we share that. And take note of that, because that's gonna be directly related to your final art <laughs> Any other, any other questions for Nick? No? Awesome. Thanks I got some stickers for y'all. If oh, anybody nice. wants to, I'm a painter living inside a painting <laughs> sticker. Nice, nice. Thanks right. for, thanks for uh, taking me here. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, folks. Have a great weekend. How's it going? Thanks for something. Well, what's up? Um, this is the Yankee Stadium, like, the, their painting. During 9 11, that was pretty good. <laughs> Yeah,
when they did a baseball game, but he was 9-11 and he was the most famous ever. Famous what? Not painting, but like, really, it was really good. Like graphics? Oh, oh like, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, brother. Appreciate you. They did 9-11 after 